Bueno, eh, buenas, eh, buenas tardes a todos, buenas noches, buenos días, depende de qué lugar del mundo nos estéis eh, viendo en este momento. Eh, bueno, hoy quiero presentaros eh, a, a Carla Sofía Mendoza. Carla Sofía Mendoza, eh, hola Carla. Hola. Eh, bien. Eh, es responsable de comunicación y organización del área internacional y ella se va a encargar hoy de de presentar a, a nuestro ponente principal, que es, nos va a dar una fantástica masterclass sobre un tema eh, muy, 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 muy importante. Nos va a proponer toda una serie de, de cambios, ¿no? En We Live in a, in a Book Award. Eh, y, y, bueno, eh, simplemente esto, que va a ser, hoy tenemos una, una masterclass con un ponente de muy, muy alto, muy alto nivel de MCA, ¿no? de Management Center Europe, eh, es profesor asociado. Y bueno, eh, Carla. Mmm, y así como dijo mano, Alberto, gracias. So we're going to start this in English because it's our first masterclass online in which Martin and Rich is going to talk about living and working in a VUCA world. I would like to introduce Martin. He is an expert in leadership and development executive coach in brands like Hugo Boss, and he's a best-seller author of Leading in a Wuka World. It, we're gonna just start this, and I'm gonna, I would like you to make any que questions and comments in the section right on your right hand left, right hand left. Hello, Martin. Hello, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. <laughs> Hi, it's Martin. Big... It's a big pleasure for me to be here. So yes, uh, I'm very happy about uh, the opportunity to speak to you. Yo podría hacerlo teoreticamente también en español, pero mi inglés es mucho más uh, profesional. <laughs> Entonces, uh, my speech is going to be in English, and then later we can you can ask your questions anytime in, in Spanish. And uh, Again, it's a big, uh, big privilege for me to be able to talk to you in these exciting and difficult uh, times. Now, here's my agenda. I'd like to introduce myself. Then I'm talking about the VUCA world. And also say where we need direction in the VUCA world. And then I'm going to present my NOPA strategy. Now, the VUCA world is sort of the, the, the situation as it is. And the NOPA is my um, strategy that I developed to survive and to be successful in the VUCA world. Then we'll have an interactive workshop uh, later today where you will be using your uh, mobile phones and where you can even win a little prize uh, today, which is my latest book. <laughs> and then we'll have uh, lessons learned and also uh, Q&A in about uh, half an hour. We will start, uh, you will also be, be allowed uh, to ask your questions. So, um, talking about myself, um, I already showed uh, what I'm drinking. So when you see this, what nationality comes to your mind? Maybe you can you can write this in the chat. If you if you see the car and, <laughs> and the drink, what's the nationality that uh, that comes to your mind? And I'm going to look at the the chat really quick. We have people telling us that from Germany. Is it, are <laughs> yes. you German? Everybody, German, 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 Germany. <laughs> Yes, you got it. You got Cross. it right. Yes. And now, can you see the, the Porsche now? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, uh, this is uh, right next to my uh, my house uh, where I live, uh, the Porsche uh, headquarter. Uh, so, uh, it's sometimes a, a bit dangerous when I introduce myself in the United States and they say, where are you from? And I say, well, we are responsible for 9-11. They are shocked because they think I'm a terrorist, <laughs> because of course they think of the 9-11 attacks and I say, no, 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 I'm not responsible for the 9-11 attacks. We are responsible for building the 9-11 Porsche Carrera. It's the car. <laughs> so that's, that's the um, 
main or one of the main players here in, in the Stuttgart area. And there's also Mercedes, of course, two really big automotive uh, companies. Now, um, I'm a little bit interested in cars, but I'm even more interested in the human brain. So I am fascinated with uh, psychology and uh, decided to start to study psychology and also got my PhD in, in psychology because I, I'm really fascinated how people think, how people feel and how people behave. I find this extremely fascinating, especially business leaders. So today my job is um, I work as a keynote speaker and executive coach and I work mainly with business leaders and uh, support them in their daily, daily work. So now I would like to know where you are from. Um, so if you're from Spain, let us know what city you're from. If you're outside Spain, also put it in the chat. And again, maybe Carla can read to me some of the cities so that, that I know where you are all from. So we have people from Madrid, Madrid, Venezuela, Spain from Asturias, Santander, Barcelona, Montevideo, Uruguay, Madrid, Lisbon, Portugal, and that's kind of all. Mexico, Buenos Aires, Florida. Oh, like a, a lot of nationalities in here. Good, good, good. Good to see you. Madrid right. again, Buenos yeah. Aires. By the way, to clear this up, this is a German beer mug, but it's not it's not beer, it's tea I put in there, just uh, so that you don't think you have been told uh, things from a drunken German. So yes, I'm German, but it's it's really tea. So, <laughs> but thanks thanks so much for for sharing, and that's terrific uh, to see that we have such a such a, a diverse and heterogeneous uh, audience from so many different uh, different places. Now, the VUCA world is uh, what I would like to talk about. Um, and I'm sure you know what VUCA stands for. It stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. What does it all mean? It means we live in a difficult world, even more so now with Corona. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a dangerous world now. And I'm feeling a lot of empathy with uh, Spain because, of course, Spain is a lot more uh, hit by the coronavirus than Germany. Um, I think yesterday was the first day in Spain where the children are allowed to go outside the house again for one hour. And, well, that's tough. I have three children, so I cannot imagine how it would be for them <laughs> to stay in the house all the time. In Germany, the situation is a little bit better. So today was actually the first day of school again for some children, uh, not for mine. Uh, just They're just starting with uh, some classes. And that's exactly what VUCA means. Vol volatility means there's a lot of change. Uncertainty is we don't know what to do. Complexity means a lot of things are connected. You know? The climate is connected with our behavior. And, and ambiguity means uh, we are not sure how to interpret certain situations. That's in a nutshell what uh, VUCA is uh, is all about it it wasn't it originates back in the 1990s uh, actually from the american military um so it's not uh, something that that came up now but the coronavirus uh, is is adding fuel to to this vuca to the vuca topic so i'm constantly now asked to talk about the vuca world and and how to how to deal with it so um that's for me a sort of a blessing in disguise that that this vuca work that I've been doing for a couple of years has now a, a big a big boom. Now, you could also say VUCA world means that you need to juggle a lot of things simultaneously. Your kids yeah, that molest you when you do home office, uh, your health, yeah, which is so tough in Spain because you're not allowed to go outside and, and go running, and, um, and your own motivation, you know, just to name a few challenges that, that you're confronted with right now. And still you need to, to, to try to stay in a positive mood and, and, and that's what VUCA really means. Now, some people say, well, the world is so crazy. All we can do is watch Netflix and do nothing. And I completely disagree. I think especially, especially 
if the world is VUCA, we need direction. We need to know where we are going. Uh, we, need, we need goals. Um, I use the compass of a, a, the metaphor of a compass a lot. Uh, so we need to know what is it that I want. Uh, so if, for example, instead of watching Netflix, we could um, use the time to educate ourselves, uh, to invest it as you do today, to invest it in seminars, um, or to invest it in, in building meaningful relationships in my family. It can also be used to invest in relationships with others use, using the telephone or using, using social media. So we definitely need a compass even for difficult times, even more than in, in, in the non-corona time. We need, um, we need a clear vision. Now this was in German, but the message is very simple. You see three people and the guy on the left says, well, I'm just working on this one brick. The guy in the middle says, I'm building a window. And the guy on the right hand side says, I'm building a cathedral. Now, the guy on the right, as you can see on the face, is of course a lot more motivated than the two other guys. So my message here is, see the cathedral. See the cathedral, whatever you do, whatever you do in, in your home office, I know it's not easy. <laughs> But see the big cathedral, understand why you're doing what you're doing, and that helps you to get through the crisis, that helps you to, to, to stay motivated, um, and that gives meaning to the times you spend with your kids, to the homeschool. You know, it's a cathedral that you're building because you're allowing them to be uh, fantastic adults uh, because they can now have this, uh, this uh, valuable family time with you. So always see the cathedral uh, because if not, you're like blindfolded or you're like this balloon going somewhere without direction. You're just zigzagging through the world. So the first message here is know what you're doing, know your inner compass, listen to your inner, inner compass. And that's uh, a prerequisite for everything that I'm going to talk about now. Now. If you know where you're going, the NOPA strategy that I developed about two years ago uh, may help you to be successful, especially, especially in a VUCA environment. There's a nice probe that, I, that I'd like to start out with. And the probe is, if the wind of change is blowing as it is today, some people build walls around them and others build windmills. So I wish you belong to the group of people that been, build windmills and use the wind of change. Now, what's this NOPA all about? N stands for networking. And I firmly believe that networking is absolutely, absolutely essential. Now, your network is your net worth. Think about this. Your network is your net worth. Because should you, for example, change your job, chances are you take some people from your professional network with you, maybe some clients, maybe even some colleagues, um, maybe even some direct reports you take with you. So network is absolutely important. Uh, even now, I'm actually more in touch with my colleagues. I'm more in touch with, with the people I collaborate with. And this is so motivating. And so I find this so beneficial. And networking does not mean only, you know, staring at your phone and only being on Facebook. Um, I would even recommend from time to time, switch your mobile phone off uh, and really spend time with the people in front of you. We live in a world where we click and scroll rather than think and reflect. And we live in a world where we send each other emoticons or emojis, but do we really share our true emotions with people? And I know a lot of people that speak more with her, with Alexa, than with oh, Siri, than with their real uh, brothers and sisters. So that's what we should not do. Uh, networking is, is is all about creating meaningful, meaningful relationships with our network, with our families, 
and it's not it's not just hanging out on on Facebook. So some thoughts about your networking. Think about who is it that you would like to be part of your network. And maybe now is a good time to define some people that you, you would like to have in your, in, your, in your network. Now, some people you want to have in your network because you think they are positive for your financial growth, could be. But I also like to associate with people that I like spiritually or emotionally, you know, they, they fascinate me. I find them somehow captivating yeah? and, and I, I, I hang out with them for my personal growth. Even now I FaceTime with them or I Skype with them or I Zoom with them. So um, again, consider, consider who is really your network and do this deliberately, do this with a lot of care. Carefully select the people uh, that you that you uh, hang out with. Now, the way we do this sometimes in my workshops is we, this is a company, for example, in, in, in the winter time. And here the task given to the group was that they should use these ropes to signal who they talk to the most within the company. So this is sort of the opposite of the normal org chart that we all know, you know, the, the pyramid that, that we all know. But this is a lot more interesting because here you see who is really part of my professional network within my company. Who is it that I'm talking to? Uh, now, in this case, by the way, the result was that all, this, all the strings, all the ropes uh, came together at the secretary, not the CEO but the secretary. So she was organizing the whole, the whole company, which was quite revealing. And then we had to think about, uh, well, what does that mean? And how can we um, you know, make sure that communication is, 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 is going smoothly to where, where it's supposed to go? So again, your network is your net worth and really, really take care of it and make sure you, you take care of your network just as you take care of your health and your nutrition. O stands for openness. I think openness is fundamental for growth. Your mind is like a parachute. It only works if it opens up, okay? So if you're stuck in a hamster wheel, always doing the same things, always going through the same routines, always hanging out in your filter bubble, no growth and no success is going to come to your life. So what you want to do is break it open. Break it open by exposing yourself to new people, by exposing yourself also to people outside of your filter bubble and, um, and try to understand their ideas. Uh, try to understand before you judge. That's my strategy in life. I try to travel as much as possible and even now I travel you know, by getting in touch with people from other, other continents, from other cultures, from other religious beliefs. And this is just broadening my horizon. And that's uh, what openness is all about. Now, you may be familiar with the four levels of learning. Basically, this model says that all learning starts with unconscious incompetence. That's the lowest level that you can see here. Unconscious incompetence means I'm doing things wrong and I'm not even aware of it. I don't even notice. Now, to get to step up to the next level of learning, conscious incompetence, someone needs to tell me. You know, I need feedback. I need to hear people who say to me, well, Martin, you're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. Um, look what you're wearing. Look the way you speak. Look, here is a mistake you make as a business leader. So it's very, very painful, but it's also healing to, again, expose yourself to people with uh, heterogeneous backgrounds to learn, to grow as a human being. And then you can continue your journey, your learning journey from conscious incompetence. The next level would be conscious competence and then finally unconscious competence, meaning you're doing things right and you're not even thinking anymore. You're an autopilot. You, it has become a routine. But again, I'm showing you this model here when I'm talking about openness uh, to make you aware that it always starts with 
unconscious incompetence and you need to be open to feedback uh, in order to learn. Now, P stands for participation. If you want to be successful in life, it's very important that you try to adopt the participatory leadership style. That means you should not be a boss, you should be a leader. What's the difference? Well, see, this is what the typical org chart looks like with a CEO on top giving his orders and then everyone just following his orders. I like to turn this upside down. At least in my mind, I'm at the very bottom of my pyramid because I enable others, I enable the organization to score, I enable other people in my organization to be successful, to score the goals. And that's what I call a real business leader, not a boss. He's not bossy, he's a real leader, uh, enriching everyone, enabling others to, to be successful. So we don't need an organization that is reliable and efficient. Today, we need an organization that is fast and agile and puts the pyramid upside down. Now, fun fact, once a year, the world is looking for the happiest people on earth. And, and um, it's interesting that the three countries on top, Finland, Denmark, Norway, they also have flat hierarchies. So that sort of, sort of proves a little bit this concept that if you practice a uh, participatory leadership style, people are happy at work and people are also happy in, in general. Um, by the way, as you can see, Spain is not on the list and uh, German isn't either. <laughs> so there's probably still way to go, but I, I, I'm, I'm happy to work in Finland, Denmark and Norway. And I can really, really see that they are doing something different at work and have a better work life balance. Now, last letter A stands for agility. Now, what does agility mean? Agility means I have a plan like you see on top, but then reality is what really happens. <laughs> yeah, and as you can see, the plan usually does not work out. Now, there's obstacles, the environment changes, the weather changes, the corona crisis is coming along. So I have to be flexible. I need to readjust. I need to adapt to, to the circumstances. And that's what agility is all about, to, to change your methods, your instruments, depending on the environment. As you can see in the, in the middle, the guy is using a stand-up paddling board uh, to, to make his way. Now, a guy who was a genius if it comes to agility is this guy, it's Thomas Edison. He invented the first light bulb and that was very late in his career. He, he was about, uh, he was kind of an old man when he finally made it and his friends came to him and said, hey, you, you, you must have had a horrible life because so many times you failed. And Thomas Edison replied, no. I never failed in my life. I successfully, for many years, successfully I eliminated many ways how not to make a light bulb shine. And I like this mindset because he anticipated failure or he reinterpreted failure or he was doing a reframing, I would say, to, to failure. And he, he said, well, it was just feedback and it helped me to finally make it. Now, this is very inspiring for me, this, this mindset, this, this attitude uh, of Thomas Edison. Um, and another guy who has this attitude is the greatest basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan. By the way, on Netflix, if you do watch Netflix, there's a very nice uh, biography of Michael Jordan right now. It's called uh, The Last Dance. And um, if you study his biography, you can see that he was very unhappy in the, at, at the beginning of his career because he did not make the basketball team. He was cut off the basketball team by the coach when he was uh, trying to be a, a basketball player in his high school, in the, in the varsity basketball team. So what did he do? Well, he kept on practicing until he made it, huh? until he made it. And I really, really like this, this attitude not you know, to let destiny wear you down, but to, to just stand up and push it again and again. 
And I also wanted to be a basketball player when I was young. And I even went to the same university as him, which is the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. So I went there was when I was 17 years old, but I didn't make it. I wasn't good enough uh, in basketball, but my big dream then became to be a bestseller author and to write uh, books that everyone would read. And here are some of my first books and they were not successful. They were not successful. No one was reading them except for my mom and my grandma. So I was very unsuccessful. But one thing I did is I listened to the feedback of the readers. You know, I, I collected feedback and each book I wrote was a little bit better than the previous book. So I wrote 49 bad books, always collecting feedback from my readers until finally in September 2018, I wrote a, a good book, <laughs> as you can see here in German, that was finally a bestseller. And since it worked out so nicely in German, I did it again two months later in December 2018 in English. So that was my first uh, bestseller. Um, and I'm a little bit proud of the bestseller, but I'm a lot more proud of the fact that I didn't give up and was always, always collecting feedback from readers and trying to change my writing style and uh, of course also the marketing of the books. So finally, uh, here I am. <laughs> and the book, by the way, is about NOPA that I just presented to you um, today. Now, before we move on um, with the Q&A part, I'd like you to take out your mobile phone and we do a little game, uh, which is very fun. And again, you get to win this, this NOPA book, by the way. And what I'm asking you to do is to go to www.menti.com. Again, www.menti. And uh, can I ask you for some feedback? If, if you can see this, you should now be able to see. Uh, we live in a VUCA world. Can you see this? Oh, brilliant. You can, and you're already connected. OK. So again, go to www w.menti.com and use the code 430113. So the code is 430113. And here's a little agenda. I'll show you a little bit what the rules are and we test uh, your swarm intelligence and then we'll have a little pop quiz about the presentation of today. So the rules are very simple, be engaged, we're all here to learn and have fun. Now, here's the first question to you. The post-corona era is going to be very bad, better than the pre-corona period or completely different. Let's see what you're, what you're thinking here. And I love this moment when the balls are flying in. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so no one says it's very bad. That's good. So you're all in a positive mindset. Some people think it's better. Hmm? Some people think that post-corona era is going to be better than the pre-corona period. And 39 people think it's completely different. So thank you so much. Now, when you think about the rest of 2020, the first word that comes to your mind is Again. Oh, someone wrote travel. That's optimistic. <laughs> Hopefully. Family. 
success tough nuevo caso home beautiful and as you can see this is called a word cloud and as you can see if a lot of people change the same word the world the word becomes bigger so change challenging and challenge was selected by a couple of people that's why it's bigger and in the middle of the word cloud thank you so much terrific okay now what's your personal lessons learned from today's presentation from this um, the first 20 minutes what's your personal learning Todo es posible y nada es seguro. Eso es. Muchas gracias. Prepare to assume a big challenge. Mm -hmm. Mukai requires no power. Thank you. That's the whole speech in a nutshell. Thank you so much. Be positive. Be participative, adapt to change and grow. Thank you, fantastic. Fantastic, thank you so much. The virtual world came to stay. Yes, I fully agree. Focus on people, absolutely. Be kind and be positive, yes. Thank you so much. Fantastic learnings. Uh, oh, by the way, you get all this uh, I will send this to you as a PDF. Oh, even you can send it to yourself on your mobile phone at the end of this. Uh, you will, you can just give your email address and then you have all the results. So I think uh, this is a very, very nice uh, thing. Okay, I move on. Uh, that's it with the, um, that's it with the uh, word cloud. Now we're doing something very fun. Just four more questions. And yes, please put in your real name so that we can identify you, because here you can win something. Whoever is asking these four questions correctly and quickly will get the prize. My book about VUCA and NOPA for free. I'm going to send it to you via postal mail to Spain, wherever you live, to Portugal, to Mexico, to Venezuela. I don't care. Uh, this is the, the prize. And uh, look how beautiful we have a lion, a bear, <laughs> volcano. Okay, and the quiz is about the presentation I just gave. It's just four questions. And again, correct answer is important, but of course also speed of answer. Let's go. VUCA stands for fifteen seconds left. Okay, twenty eight people got it right. Terrific. Okay, next. We click and scroll, where's my mobile phone? Instead of click and scroll, instead of Three, two, one, time is up. Think and reflect. Very good. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, very good. And uh, next question. 
the lowest level of learning. What's the lowest level of learning? Four, three, two, one, SOS. Time is up. Very good. Wow, terrific result. 37 people got it right. Unconscious incompetence. Oh, and I think there's one more question. And the last question is NOPA. NOPA stands for. Very good. Wow. 43. Mira. Muy bien, muy bien. 43. So, 43 people have not been asleep. <laughs> That's good news. Very nice. And I think now we have a winner of our quiz. Da -da -da -da. And we will have confetti. Let's see. So, again, it was speed and uh, if the answer is correct or not. Amanda Davies. Muy bien. Second was, by the way, Elizabeth Guitar. Y tercero, Montana. Montana. But 3,561. It's a very good score. So, congratulations, Amanda. Um, please give your postal address to someone you trust <laughs> or, or send it to me or put it in the, in the, in the chat. Oh, you can send it over the chat just to me. Um, and then I will, I will send you the book, I promise. And uh, thanks so much. And now we will enter the question and answer part. And uh, I pass it to Carla. And again, you can ask the questions in Spanish or in English. And uh, I will answer. Okay. Uh, and, and we have Elizabeth, Elizabeth uh, guitar. Uh, that was second in in this challenge. <laughs> um, uh, has her her had uh, Elizabeth? Uh, I don't know if you want to uh, if you want to 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 ask a question, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, you have a question. No, no question. <laughs> okay, I'd like I'd like to 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 uh, to ask a question to you. Uh, uh, well, we are talking about uh, uh, about uh, this this situation is is an opportunity perhaps for everybody. Yeah, it's a drama, but um, it's a, it's a, an opportunity. And how do you think uh, COVID can change the way the managers do? Because uh, I, um, we see uh, how, the, uh, how they can see the, the all situations and, and how they, they can afford it. But how in, the, in these new situations, no, how do you think can change the way the manager, the manager do from now? Mm -hmm. I, I think this will have three effects. I'm, I'm very optimistic now, but I think this will have three effects <laughs> on the managers, uh, the corona crisis. The first is very pragmatic. First of all, managers will allow more home office. Huh? This is not just going to go back to normal because now they have seen, yes, it is possible that people work from home. It is possible and they really do work. <laughs> so. Yeah. The first, the first thing is that they will allow more flexibility and they will allow more people to work uh, home-based. That's the first effect. The second effect is associated with the first, and that is they will have more trust. I hope that managers will have more trust in, in their employees because if people work home-based, you need to trust them. You cannot constantly control them. 
so they will trust that you that you do the right thing to achieve results and i think this is also a chance and also a, a positive um, development and the last and third effect i think is that they will practice a more participatory leadership style that in my nopa that is the p <laughs> yeah i think the the, the pyramid the, the old pyramid with the ceo on top will no, no longer be possible no? people will realize that they need to empower people they they need a leadership style where they encourage people where they they empower others to achieve results so i hope that that is going to be the third effect uh, that the higher hierarchy becomes more flat and people get more responsibility more quickly good Okay. Now I have the question of Elizabeth. Okay. She's telling us that how do you imagine the new norm normality in terms of relationships and leadership uh, is going to be in, in the professional world from now on? Okay, excuse me, can you repeat this again? It is uh, the new normality, like how it's going to work from now on, the leadership no, no in, the, in, the, in the professional world. Mm -hmm. I just didn't understand the second word you said, the normality. normality. No. Yes, normality. Ah. Like everything's ah. gonna change. So it's gonna be from now on, okay. it's gonna be different now. Okay, the new standard. Mm -hmm, the new standard. The new standard of relationships at the workplace. Is that it? In the yes, in the professional world. Yes. yes, very good. That's a very good question. What is the new standard? Well, again, I start with something very pragmatic. The handshake will not come back. I think the handshake will cease to exist. This is dramatic because, I mean, we were educated in a way that my mom told me, give people the hand. No, I think this will no longer be the case when we return. Uh, I think we have to find a new form of greeting each other in business meetings. And I think the greeting could be something like this. Huh? Uh, you know, put your, put your, I like it if you just say hello yeah? and a small bow and your hand hand on the heart. I think this is very polite and very nice. I don't need to touch uh, people to show respect. So something like that will be established. What is it? It's still to be seen, but I think it could be this or maybe even this. <laughs> something, yeah. something like this. So this is this is how the business meetings will start with a no handshake but the handshake will be replaced by another ritual because we are, as human beings, we need a ritual. And I, I, I love it that when you greet, you do something. It's just not gonna be the hand. It's gonna be a no touch ritual. Um, and then some, some, some companies have already started this in the pre-corona era, maybe a minute of silence. Now, really big companies do that like Amazon, Google, Facebook, when they have big business meetings, they start with one minute of silence and that's just to concentrate yourself, to experience what's going on within yourself emotionally, to calm down, you know, because maybe I'm still aggressive from the last meeting and now I'm you know, putting all my aggression on you, <laughs> which would not be nice. So I take this minute to reset myself emotionally to find my inner self balance and then we start the meeting. So I think this is something that that could also happen even online. Now that would be the, the next revolution, that one minute of silence and using this one minute for meditation or, or self-awareness, I think even in a virtual environment, in virtual business meetings, I can even see this happening because just because I switch on my computer doesn't mean I'm here. And maybe I'm still thinking about the kids running around or some other stuff. So this is also something that that I think could shape the, the relationships in, in the workplace, more awareness and a non-touch, a non-touch culture. Nice. We have another okay. one from Diana. Sorry, uh, more than Carla. Uh, uh, we yeah. have a question from Diana Joffrey. Diana? Diana? Good morning, Diana. Morning, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. yes, thank you, Martin, for your presentation. 
I would like to know what would be the most important competency that employees should develop in this new normality? Thanks. That's a very good question. What's the most important competency for an employee, not a business leader, but an employee in this, in this new environment? Um, well, if I wanted to do advertising for myself, I think it would be NOPA, <laughs> all four, a good networker, be open, be participatory and agility. But I think if I had to choose one, then it would be the last one, the A. I think the, the most important competency is the agility. That means for an employee in these in these VUCA times, agility is, is, is fundamental. That means to be able to motivate yourself again and again every day, even if you're working home-based, even if it's difficult, even if uh, your bank account is empty, <laughs> and even if even people in your family uh, caught the coronavirus and even died, you know, this is this is also horrible, and still you you move on. You know? We we also call this resilience, and resilience and agility is very very close to each other. No, resilience and agility. That means the ability of a human being to bounce back after a loss, to bounce back after a crisis, to bounce back after um, a disease, after a disaster. Uh, so if I had to choose just, just one of the four, it would be agility or slash uh, resilience. That means to again, to come back even after after something really negative. I have a little demo for you here. Look, uh, let's see if we can do this. Yes. You see, I have, I have here a ball that doesn't bounce back. And that is no resilience. It just stays down. But now, this one is bouncing back. So resilience is this is no resilience, this is resilience. So it's to bounce back after a loss, to bounce back after uh, a crisis. I think that that is the main, uh, the main uh, competence that, that, that you need. Okay, I have a, one more question from Maria Peligo. I guess she is from Portugal because it's on Portuguese and it's about what is the role that HR managers have to do to avoid the changes and not to be affected in this new normality? What, what can they do to, to be different? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I think the question was what should the HR professionals do to avoid changes? Avoid, yes. I think they shouldn't avoid. Indeed, they shouldn't indeed, avoid changes. They should drive changes. They should uh, shape changes. I think the the HR department has a very very uh, important role now in the in, in the Corona area, but of course also in the in the post Corona era, the the HR department should should be um, they should be change managers. You know, they should, for example make sure that that we maintain this flexibility we should the hr should make sure that we have flexible working hours that we will continue to be able to work home based if we want to they should be able hr department should also make sure that the leadership culture is changing in in, in the companies that we have a more participatory leadership style so i think these these are the things the, the hr department should uh, should drive not uh, not avoid Okay. It's not, she's writing us that it's not kind of, of a void. It's to assure that the good changes are not forgotten. Ah, very good. Yes, very good. I fully agree. Yes, the good changes should not be forgotten. No, they should be consolidated yeah? and they should be installed forever <laughs> in the system. Um, and again, this, this, this culture of trust, this culture of cooperation, uh, you know, I've seen also a lot of, a lot of mutual help. Uh, for example, here in my neighborhood, uh, young people going shopping for elderly people, for example, uh, but also in companies. 
I've seen a lot of um, a lot of empathy uh, with my clients. I've seen a lot of mutual understanding. Um, for example, for events that we that we that we organized, tickets were not asked back, but people agreed that the event is just postponed. I think this is a very cooperative mindset. This is a very non-aggressive mindset. And if we can transfer this in, in the post-corona era, that would be fantastic. And again, the HR department plays a, a pivotal role, a crucial role in ensuring that this is that we succeed in taking the positive aspects um, into, into the future. And I, I firmly believe that this is possible. She's telling us that it's really easy to people to forget when everything returns to normal. We have another one from Marcelo Luciano. What do you think is the role of politicians will be after the coronavirus? Poor. That's a tough politicians. Oh, that's tough. Even now it's tough to be a politician. <laughs> um, well, the the main role of a politician in the post-corona period for me is to stimulate the economy. And with all my heart, I'm very European. So I hope, I hope that Europe is growing closer together. And I hope that politicians in Europe come up with some programs to stimulate the European economy, uh, to stimulate growth, to stimulate uh, a economic resurrection, because that's what we need. The economy has never been so bad uh, since, since, since we are all alive. So yes, we need politicians that take a lot of money and invest it into growth and stimulate, uh, stimulate growth. This is, this is what I think we, we need. And, and again, people that believe in collaboration and not in nationalism. I think with, with nationalism, I, th I don't think we, we solve uh, the climate uh, problem. And I, I think with nationalism, we don't solve the next uh, Corona crisis because one thing is for sure, this is not the last. Uh, we will have the next pandemic coming up just around the corner, all the coronavirus even coming back with the second wave, the third wave, and then the next virus. So what I would do as a politician is absolutely invest in international collaboration, not just European, even global, global collaboration and a stimulation of, of economic growth. And we have a, one last question from Nina Salva. She's telling us like, hi, Martin. Thank you for sharing. And her question is, what do you think regarding to the book environment with the coronavirus and the crisis in the headlines? and how that will impact the job market together. Mm. I, I didn't understand the beginning, sorry. Was it the book market? It's regarding the VUCA environment. Ah, yes. The coronavirus. Mm -hmm. um, and how this crisis is gonna like impact in the job market together. Mm. Okay, okay, yes. Well, first of all, negatively, now, of course, we have a lot of people unemployed already. Um, hopefully, hopefully, we will bounce back again with resilience, with agility, we'll, we'll, we will bounce back. I'm sure new industries will evolve. Um, I think what's going to happen is that we will produce a lot more locally. Now we will, we will stop importing so much from China um, and, and, and start producing a lot of stuff locally. And by locally, I really mean in the area and within the city yeah, or around the city you live in. So new jobs will, will, um, start, to ex will start to exist. New jobs will be created. I think it'll, it'll take a while until the wounds heal from from the corona crisis i think the wounds will need to heal for at least a year but then i believe that we can emerge stronger than we were before um, and hopefully continue life on 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 a higher level not only economically but also in terms of again
collaboration and maybe even also on a higher spiritual awareness. Because I think that the planet needed this crisis to show us that we cannot just continue to live our lives as we have before. It sounds a little bit spiritual, but and it is. And I really think we cannot just continue the way we did before with all the pollution, you know, with the um, with the too dramatic uh, economic growth that we had. We need we need a new awareness and really think about what makes sense, what doesn't, and hopefully our society can learn from the crisis and um, again continue to live life fuller on 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 a higher level. So, well, we are out of time right now. So it's really a pleasure for us to have to come with you and with all your knowledge and your dedication in this team. And uh, thank you, Martin, for your participation. I'm, I'm gonna uh, thank the people for making their questions and for all of the audience. We will have few few more webinars this week, so you can check them in the in our website. Thank you very much and greetings from Madrid to Germany. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Carlo. And thanks so much for everyone who was listening. It was a pleasure. Thanks for your fantastic questions. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.